Okay, I want to take a bit of time explaining to you how the copy to point and uh, point orientation attribute works in Houdini. And to do that, I'm going to create just a, a little setup pretty quickly here. Let me just create a curve, something like this. Let's add a resample. And uh, okay, perfect, like this. And I'm going to create um, a box or an object I want to copy onto this curve. And not just a standard cube, what I want is actually uh, an object in which I care about its orientation. So I, I will make it, I make the height a bit higher than the other, something like this. Perfect. Okay. And now if I just copy to point, you will understand why there is actually a need to do a video like this. If I do that and that, so just before on the copy to point, the right input, if you read here, it's the target point you want to copy to, and the left input is the primitive you want to copy on the target point. So the, I want to copy this box onto the points. And if you look at the result, and let me just scale a bit, sorry, scale a bit the box so we have a better understanding. Something like this. Let's add a bit more point too. Okay, good. And as you can see, it's definitely not the right rotation. What I wanted at the beginning was to have the box on this orientation to be copied on those points. But right now it's not happening at all. Why is that? And to understand what's happening, let's just have a quick look onto the documentation. There is a specific page on the Houdini uh, documentation, which is called Copying and Instancing Point Attributes. And it's a pretty lengthy page explaining all the attributes that Houdini will recognize to make your copy follow a certain orientation or transform. And uh, as you can see, there is a lot of attributes, so orient, scale, and up, transform, etc. But what we want is this part here, right here, which is the really important part I want you to understand. Let's just read quickly through it. What it's saying to us is like, if Houdini detects certain attributes in a certain order, it will try to use them first. And one of the first will be the transform attribute. And the transform attribute, if we go just a bit up, so here, transform attribute, you can see it's supposed to be a vector, and it's going to say to us, if the transform attribute exists, use this as a matrix to transform the copy instance. This is a bit complex, I actually never quite use it because uh, I will show you a way more simpler, simpler um, version of this. And uh, so let's say we don't have a transform attribute, which is our case. If I go back to Dini, if we go onto the, 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 the target points, and if you look at the, the attributes, so the only thing we have is just a P. We don't have anything. So if we just go back here, so we don't have a transform attribute. What happens if we don't have one? Use the orient attribute. What is the orient attribute? If you just look right here, it's a float for, it's actually a quaternion. Quaternion sounds scary, I know. But it's saying if you have the quaternion orient, we're going to use this to orient the object, so to rotate it. And right now, if I just go back here, as you can see, no orient attribute here. So can, what can we do? Fortunately, there is still an option for us. If the orient attribute does not exist, we are going to use the n and the up attribute. Okay, this is important. Those keywords they are keyword recognized by Unity. The N, we already used it, and I'm pretty sure you're familiar with it. It's a standard Udini. It represents the normal, actually. And the up, you have to write it like this, is going to be used at the Y axis. So if you have both the N and the up, you are already good to go. And we are just going to see in Udini how to, to use this information to have our box in the right direction. So back in Udini, Let's try to use the knowledge we just learned from the from the documentation and have this box to match the right direction, okay? And just to have a bit better understanding of what's going on, I'm going to drop this node, which is the, a quick digital aside I made. I'm going to share it with the tutorial by the end. It's a really simple thing that allows you to uh, just have um, some kind of helper to understand how the axes are actually set up. You can change uh, some of the look, the pointiness. I just had some fun with it. Uh, you can disable, enable some of them. And if I look inside, it's really nothing fancy. If you just really quickly want to understand how I made it, it just started as a tube. 
and then I just extrude the extrude and make the arrow. And actually, the distance of the extrusion, I think it's this one. I don't remember. Uh, yeah, this one, the distance here, if I just remove it, it's controlling the pointiness. And I just duplicated this arrow a bunch of time and merge everything with some colors. So really nothing fancy. Let me just hop, do like this. And I'm going to merge this with the box. And that's why that's pretty cool. We can you know, have a visual representation of the axis of this box. And what I, I'm going to replace this with this. And let's scale everything down. Something like this. Perfect. Let's add a bit. Yeah. Okay, good. So now we can see, you remember the, we can see the, the green, blue and, and red arrow. Just remember the green is the Y axis. Okay. So you can see it right here. The blue is the Z axis and the red is the X axis. And if we see right now, what's happening is that the Z axis is pointing down. But what we want, we want the Z axis to actually follow the curve and we want the Y axis, so the green one, to be pointing really up. Okay. Let's try something. Let's try to mess with the N, the N vector. Okay. Just if I go back here, the N is the Z axis. This is really important. So if I just add a point wrangle, this way it will just it will be quicker for me. And what we want to do, if I just type at n, I'm going to, to work with the normal attribute, so the n attribute. Everything you tap after n will be an attribute. If it doesn't exist, it will create it, and if it exists, it will modify it. So and I just put a v before to to make sure I'm working on a vector. I'm going to set this to something completely arbitrary, like 1, 0, 0. And what that will give me, if I just look at the normal, now all my normals are, port are pointing on the, on the x axis. If I do something like minus 1, they will point the other direction. Something like this. I can play around with it. I can do, okay, point them up, or even point them in the z axis. Okay, but let's keep with it. And what you have to picture before I display this node is that this direction, okay, the, the, the blue arrow will match this direction, okay? So you can picture before I, I display the copy to point, like how it's going to be rotated. So this arrow, the blue one, sorry for the normal, the blue one is going to match this one, okay? Let's see. And indeed, that's exactly what happened. So all the blue arrows are now pointing on the X axis. Let's try to mess with this one. What if we do minus one? Hey, look, it worked. So the, all the blue arrows are now pointing on the minus one direction. Let's do, let's, let's point the N at zero, one, zero. So it's going to point up like this. And indeed it worked. So already we can have a bit of control on it. Unfortunately, using only the N is not enough to work. We have to have at least two axes. Let me just comment that. And I just want to explain you something else. Let me remove that. I want to explain to you why by default, without any attribute, it looks like this. Okay, why, why the Z is pointing down? And it's actually pretty simple if I just just focus on my original curve and I just do something like this. Okay. I'm going to set up to set the N attribute as the N attribute. It may sound a bit weird if you never see this, but what's actually happening. I'm just going to, to make explicit what was the implicit normal before, because even if you don't see any normal here, I'm sorry, even if there is, isn't any normal here, would you need actually some inside, but you don't see them by doing that. I'm just going to make them explicit. And if I just displace normal, as we can see, there are indeed some normals. Like we, di we didn't set those up. See, just Houdini, when we draw the curve, it they were actually created. And as we can see, they are pointing down. And I think you, you see where I'm going with this. If we watch this, 
I can I can see why now the the arrow are all pointing down because the original normal of this of the mesh was pointing down. If we remove this, as you can see, nothing changed. It's still pointing down. So this is one explanation of why everything was pointing down. Okay, and uh, let's try to have the the Z arrow follow the curve. Okay, and for that we are going to use the polyframe node, which is a extremely useful node because it allows you to create tangents and tangents are not something easy to, to create by you know by hand or by mass and uh, the polyframe allows you to do all this process automatically and uh, as you can see it's creating two attributes the normal attribute and the tangent attribute and the normal attribute it's doing exactly what we did before with a wrangle just going to put that back again when I did at n equals at n then making the normal explicit like this, it's doing the same thing, okay? And it's also creating the tangent and storing in an, uh, an attribute called tangent u. Let's rename it so it's going to be easier to, to type in. I'm going to call it t. But the thing is like we cannot actually see it in the view. We would like to see it just like the normal, that would be really handy. And fortunately, there is a way for us to do that. What we are going to do, we are going to do into the light bulb here and just add a scene visualizer. Let's add a marker, and uh, this allows you to customize the way attributes are displayed in, in the scene. So I'm just going to, going to call this one tangent. This is going to be a vector, and it's going to be called t. And uh, okay, everything is good. Let's add, uh, we can even add some arrow tips and everything, which is really cool. And uh, right now it's not displaying. I think it's a little bit buggy sometimes. You have to go there, scale vector. Okay, I didn't. Yeah, I have to actually click the light bulb. And now, as you can see, they are here. I can also change the size of my vector here. And you see, it's pretty cool. I have, I can actually see my tangent and my uh, my normal. What we want is actually the yellow arrow to be the the n, so to be the z. And it's really easy. We can just uncheck this one. And instead of calling it t, let's call it n. That way, the tangent is now the n attribute. I hope that makes sense. And if we plug this here, now the blue arrow of the box should match this direction. And let's see. And indeed, it worked. That's really cool. Okay, you can see now that the the blue direction is actually following the tangent that we set up here because we called it n. And because the n is the z direction, the blue arrow and the tangent are matching perfectly. Really cool, right? What can we do? Let's say we want to to, to move the Y arrow, okay? So we, we still want the blue arrow to follow the curve, but let's say we want to have something. Let me do it with a transform. Let's say we want something, okay? Here, I'm just added, I just added a transform and I'm rotating around the, the Z axis. So I'm rotating around the blue arrow something like this okay and let's say what I want to do I want to do the same thing but without this transform node okay I want to have all this information only on this side that's why I don't have to mess with my original geometry let's say I want to rotate something like this okay I want the green direction to be like this but without using a transform so what we will need to do would we need to have the up attribute pointing this way onto our original geometry and let's do something really cool let's add another visualizer right here and we are going to call this one up this way we can visualize how the hub is looking okay we don't have it right now but as soon as we are going to create it, it's going to be displayed let's put it green so it's going to match you know the, the color of the, of the arrow which is pretty cool and uh, yep like this Okay, so now we have to create a vector that is pointing this direction. How we do that? If you are a bit familiar with math, it's uh, actually pretty simple because we already have the, the blue direction, so we already have this tangent. Okay, and we actually have already have the, the red direction, which is only a uh, vector pointing perfectly up. And if we do actually a cross product between the up and the z, so the red and the blue, we are going to get the green. And let me show you that here. 
So we have this. Let's add a wrangle, point wrangle. And uh, I'm going to create a new attribute. I'm going to call it up. Okay. And just so you see that it exists, let's put an arbitrary value. And as you can see, our up is there. But we actually want the up to face no, this direction. You know, and as I said, it's going to be a cross product. So let's try that right now. Let's say that up is going to be across, across between, uh, so the up vector. So not to be confused, okay, when I'm saying up vector, I'm saying just a vector pointing 0, 1, 0, not the actual up vector. So this is like the name up is important, but it, it can point any direction you want. And I'm going to do a cross product between a vector 0, 1, 0 and our normal and this should give us something we want i think it was the other direction so let's just can we do that perfect okay and if you visualize now the up and the end okay this is what we want and if we plug this here what should happen is that the the, the green arrow should uh, have the same orientation as this, but without using this transform. Okay, let me disable this one, and let me plug this right into it. And let me disable it. And as you can see, it works. Actually, the the green arrow are following th those green vector, which is really cool because now we don't have to mess with anything. This was just a, a scale, you know, but we don't have to mess with our original geometry. I mean, we can do all of what we want for the transformation, the main rotation on this part, which is really handy, if you ask me. And now we can also add some transforms there. So let's say I want to rotate on the Y axis. I can rotate here. I really like to have this arrow because when I do some, some rotation, variation, I can really know where I'm going to rotate. So let's say I want to have a rotation on uh, this, rotating this way, if I just rotate X. I already know what I'm going to do because sometimes, you know, vector and rotation, it's a bit hard to get your head around, but having this kind of visualization is really helpful. So now we understand all of this a bit better. So just to to, to make a quick summary, we need the N and the up vector to be on the right orientation. Okay, so the N will be our Z and the up will be our Y. And with that, we are going to continue on the branches and we are going to create some spawn points to copy our, our ivy leaves onto the branches with what we learn. Okay, see you on the next video.